ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, let's introduce Jake Vargas here from Wisconsin. Yes, cheese out of the state. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing in Austin, Texas, Jake? Building, what are you doing right now? Basically, carving my own path in my life. What do you mean you're carving your own path? I don't see any carving tools. What do you mean by that? Must be a metaphor. Uh, no, carving cookie cakes. Dang. But yeah. Uh, no, my parents. Pretty much everyone's up in Wisconsin, and I felt like I needed to get out of my comfort zone, so I moved down here to carve my own path. And Wisconsin, nothing wrong with it. To each their own. Everyone do, does their nine to five up there. Pretty traditional in the sense of work uh, lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. But but it wasn't enough for you. No, especially when most of the people I knew grew up, growing up. They pretty much stayed in Wisconsin. They okay. They travel. Yeah, but it's like they never really left home. Mm. Okay. And again, nothing wrong with that. Well, good. I'm glad you don't think anything was wrong with that. Yeah, nothing wrong with well people that want to do that and not leave. But for me, it's like there's more to this world to experience of what God's created. So, amen to that. There's a lot. There's an abundant amount to experience and to give back. Mm-hmm. So, Jake, you're a freaking inventor all right i don't know too many we had tomer saran come on uh last week he invented a uh whiteboard that transitions into a picture frame it looks really sleek hmm. right you get your ugly whiteboard on your wall and then just go boom it's a picture it looks great you invented you guys <laughs> the cold plunge caddy and they call you the cold plunge daddy that's right that's right I didn't give myself that nickname. Some uh, some models did, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know how, how, how Jake, or, or why. I, I can probably guess why. You're friends with a lot of models around here in Austin. Uh, if you consider yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah, so the cold plunge caddy is a revolutionary uh, technology that allows you to reproduce the effects of a cold plunge without dropping thousands of dollars, taking up cubic feet of your space, having to manage the water and treat it and all this other nonsense that comes along with that. The cold plunge caddy is affordable for most, for the masses. And you can pop it up as long as you've got a shower. And ice. And some ice. Because, yes, the temperature is here, at least for my shower, only 70 degrees. It gets down to it. It's cold to setting. Mm-hmm. Once you throw the ice in there, pop up the cold plunge caddy, gets down to 42 degrees. Dang. So it competes with a cold plunge. Yeah. Do you get fully submerged? Not necessarily, but for a lot of beginners or people that have not experienced that or are wanting to get into that and get those benefits, this is like the good, we've had the best product to start on. No, no, it, it really is. <clears throat> and what's really cool about this journey you've been on, in my personal opinion, is that I've got the see it from the thought to the real life thing in the box shipped to customers and it was such a cool thing to be a part of jake you have no idea man i mean you're in it and you have your own feelings being on the outside watching like dude it's cool yeah to watch that to watch you come up with the idea and make it real it's super sick which we're only talking a few months ago now <laughs> yeah it was only a few months which is super empowering for anybody listening that wants to create an invention. So here's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. We want to talk to the people that have ideas to invent something and are on the fence. Jake, walk us through the process. Just take the plunge. Just do it. <laughs> Stop it, dude. <laughs> take the plunge, freaking guy. I was about, yeah. So looking back, I want to say April, but even going before that, like going to a lot of workout events, experiencing cold plunges not a big thing in wisconsin besides if you were due to uh cold plunging in lake michigan which sub sub freezing zero temperatures um but here it's like a big thing just it's part of your lifestyle and in april i was doing a 3d printing accelerator course trying to figure out like products to sell on amazon and new cold plunging was something i wanted to incorporate into my daily routine why were you looking to find things to put on Amazon? Uh, started carving my own path because I've always worked a nine to five job. 
Very good. And it's like, I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit in me. I've always had a lot of ideas, but I've never known how to necessarily capitalize on them. Fair. Yeah. So and you took the plunge. Took the plunge. But it was this first coming up with the concept of like, okay, or actually no first, what's the problem? Well, I want a cold plunge. I don't go to a gym where they actually have one at it. I go to Gold's gym. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't have the gym that does that. I'd have to spend like a bunch of money to go to another gym, which I know on it has them. Yeah, and 40 I, bucks a month versus 190 bucks a month. That's a big difference. Yeah. Just to get a cold plunge in. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's not worth it. If, you're, if that's all you're going for, it's not. No. Yeah. But so then I'm like, okay, well. There's the, the portable ones you can buy online yeah, from like Pod Company or any of those others. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, still the setup time takes a while. You got to put it all together. Then you got to get all the water in there, which, okay, what are you going to, where are you going to get that like, buckets of water from your own sink? Mm. And then you got the ice no. you got to buy too mm. and throw it in there. But then, okay, where do I put this thing? I have a tiny little porch on the second story of my apartment but still, it's like after I'm done with it, where do I dump all that, dude? It's a mess. So it's gallons, gallons. Yeah. You're just wasting, it. and it's like, yeah, sure, you could let it sit, but again, you know, if you're sweating and you get in there, it's like, what kind of germs are in there? Oh, it's pretty gross. Yeah, I've been in cold plunges before, and I, you know, I don't even really like going to pools. I mean, I get oh, chlorine kills the germs, dude. It's just a thought. How do you feel when you get in there? How do you feel when you get out? Especially if there's kids. Stop. No cold plunge, kids. You're not getting that. I'm not getting in those kid pools. Gross. So, yeah, this innovative product, it, it, it's, it reminds me of a spaghetti strainer, but specifically engineered to filter the right speed to deliver the constant flow of, what's the temperature again? 42 degrees. 42 degrees, Jake. See, that's amazing. And it's the perfect even flow covers all inches of your body and i'll tell you what it wakes you right up it's super easy create it it's just like brushing your teeth boom put the ice in i got one put the ice in enjoy yourself wake up yeah you don't it's, eat coffee well especially if hey you kind of slept the wrong way the previous nights or you're kind of groggy in the morning but it's like boom wakes you up right away you're like all right i'm ready to go yeah. locked and loaded fired up hot sauce Okay. So let's bring it back to the process. You thought of it? Yep. So then started thinking like, okay, something has to flow through, get the strainer idea. Okay, how am I going to hang the thing? Mm. Well, I know everyone was thinking at the time that was pitching like ideas to help with it, like suction cups. But I'm like, well, but you're talking about four pounds of ice in this thing. They can hold up too. But it's like, well, there's a potential lawsuit on hands if that were to come off the wall all that ice falls on someone, you never know. I mean, just like the lady with McDonald's and the, oh, I didn't know the coffee was hot. So trying to like think of uh, being risk averse or doing some risk assessment on potential issues that might come up from a lawsuit. So that's where I had the adhesive hooks that I went with that you can just stick on there or, hey, you have a a, a curtain rod Mm -hmm. for your shower. So you just loop it around there, but then still have one of the adhesive hooks hanging on it. And so then it was just trying to identify all the materials I would need to do it, um, source those out, which I have my supply chain background, so I'm very good at that. Yes, because I was wondering about that. For me, I wouldn't know what to do with that, man. How yeah. do you get the parts? Who makes the parts? Who do you call to make the parts? Google. Google search. It's crazy. I mean, I have really? a global sourcing manager at a couple of jobs ago, and pretty much a lot of it was Google search. Like, first I, identifying... What is it that we need? And then getting some feedback from the engineers on the technicalities, maybe some drawings, and then going out and finding suppliers that fit that. Yeah. And then just having conversations with people, building those relationships. So I basically did that, but just on my own this time and had some talks with some Chinese suppliers on Alibaba, just trying to identify like, okay, what's the minimum order quantity that I could purchase and afford right now? Mm-hmm. Um, do they have any ready to go? That's another big thing on available inventory. What are the shipping costs? Um, any uh, taxes on it? Everything you have to consider. What the packaging 
or how many units are sent per package and what's the lead time. Dude, that's logistics. Oh, yeah. Well, supply chain or logistics is part of supply chain. Yeah. Supply chain kind of came up in like the mid, early 2000s as a new term. Because logistics used to be like that was the term, like you're just moving materials and parts from one place to another. That's logistics. But now logistics is actually considered part of the process of the entire supply chain where now it's like, okay, you're having to think about the end customer and all the different components that are needed from different suppliers across the world. I mean, logistics used to be more local, like, hey, there's a store down the road. That's where I'll buy my stuff from. But now with the internet, it's expanded to global. Mm. And then there's the supply chain people, uh, which I would consider like the coach of a football team, kind of coordinating where all this stuff is coming from. Because then you'll have someone like a player, football player in logistics, like shipping and receiving departments, uh, figuring out the inco terms of like, how do we want the ship to cover like our, our butts in case the shipping gets messed up. Or gets lost or stolen. Right. And then you have um, the purchasers that are, again, part of the team or football players that uh, actually coordinate with the suppliers to see, like, how many quantities of units we need to buy something. Jake, how do people get a hold of you if they want to uh, to pay you to teach a class on this? Uh, at Machine Margus on Instagram. Machine Margus, M-A-C-H-I-N-E. And then M A R G I S. No spaces, no underscores. Nope. Yeah. Hit them up because um, it's some valuable information. Because literally, folks, I saw it from the idea and now I've got one in less than a year. People think it takes forever to do this stuff. No. 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 And a big part of it for me, too, was like you're talking about how like some people think this takes a year or years to do it. Yeah. I, I had a lot of conversations with my mother, which is probably where I get some of my entrepreneurial spirit from. Um, Where's your mom? What's that? Where's your mom? She's up in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. She's a neonatal nurse uh, at she loves Trumbull. babies. Yeah. She pets a lot of, she holds a lot of babies. <laughs> pets a lot of babies. <laughs> Good little baby. Go on. I, I mean, I'm sure that's oh part God. of it, but uh, she takes care of them. Good little baby. All right. Yeah, that's cool. But she had said to me, though, like, you know, you should move forward with this because, like, she's had a lot of ideas that could be implemented in the hospitals in her unit mm. and other units like hers. And she's seen them over the years get implemented, which, yes, there's a lot of regulatory stuff that goes into, like, getting approvals for, like, equipment that's going to be used for babies or a patient in general. But she's like, yeah, I've had so many ideas I'm going to go to the grave to. Yeah. And it's like, I don't want to be that guy. Nope. Nope. Because it's regrets. Yeah. Which, before moving down to Austin, I had a lot of regrets about life. Like what? I mean, I was in the Marines. Uh, did really? the officer candidate school program. You were a Marine? 50% of people can say I'm a Marine, some don't, but... Because you were in a school, but you oh, didn't... Oh, so yes. Yeah. This is during college. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't go out and lead the people. I mean, that was part of the training, yes. We were at really? Quantico, Virginia. Did you lead uh, the infantry people that they enlisted? Uh, no, this was all officer candidates. This was just dur during the training. It was in the school the whole time? Yes. What? Well, how come you didn't go out into the fleet or whatever they call it? Uh, I had signed my life away to go do it, but uh, <laughs> as we're talking about women troubles, uh, I was dating the wrong girl at the wrong time or technically actually engaged to her. Oh, my God. And I broke that off. Jake. You're telling me that you were in OCS school. First and foremost, all right, it's a really big honor because in my experience, the enlisted people always look up to the officers. I mean, their uniforms are nicer. They get paid more money and all this other stuff. You're in OCS school and a woman pulled you out of that. Well, the experience that was associated with the woman mm -hmm. is what ultimately drove you to, to get out of there. It, well, it didn't drive me to get out of there. It was just grades that suffered. I had fallen below a certain GPA level that they required. How bad were your grades? Uh, it was supposed to be a 2.67 average. Yeah. I fell just below that. Where Where is that girl today? Don't know. Don't know. Don't care. I haven't seen her. No. When you talk about the toxicity in a relationship, what, what actually was all going down? I mean, she 
had bipolar issues. Okay, that's, that, that could I, be challenging. That I was aware of, and I was willing to be supportive of her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it got to the point where she stopped taking her medication, mm. and it kind of just came to me. I'm like, okay, like I'm willing to like support you in all ways here, but if you can't even take care of yourself, knowing this issue that you do have, mm. like there's nothing else I can do. And so if you're not at 100%, you know, then how, how's this relationship going to be at 100%? Right. And so a month before the wedding, I called it quits and Mm. broke up with her. Okay. How old are you? 22. 22. Oh, yeah, young buck. Yeah, dumb little kid. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to touch base upon that in uh, in the second episode that we record. Yeah. Let's get, that gets released tomorrow, everybody, for those that are listening. That gets released on Thursdays, the backstory. Let's get, let's bring it back to the invention side. Yeah. So as far as uh, figuring out all the materials and everything, Doing a lot of testing for a good month, month and a half. Um, mounting in my shower and everything. And actually taking a thermometer, seeing what the temperatures get down to. First it was like 52 degrees, but then it's like, okay, more ice. The longer you leave it running, it gets down to 42 degrees. Hmm. And so I was testing it every morning in my shower, making sure, okay, from a user standpoint, does this actually work as me being the user at that point, the sole user? Right. And it's a great question to ask. I mean, I also have a lean Six Sigma background. So was that quality uh, testing? Mm. Uh, very analytical. I, I wish I could explain it in a better way right now. <laughs> but high standards. Basically, yeah. Maintaining the standards of like, does this product actually work on what it's supposed to do? Like a uh, example of a perfect Six Sigma product, not all the time as of recent, but. Uh, airplanes Hmm. Hmm. if they're not completely six sigma ready like they don't fly or they have their issues like they do it's the gold standard for standards Mm -hmm. it's the label for the gold standard (laughs) sick how do you spell it six sigma number six yeah what does that mean really is that Greek or something? Six Sigma. Oh, now you're asking me to that go back. That sounds so cryptic, dude. You're asking me to go back. I was too. 35. I've never heard of Six Sigma. It's definitely something if you're trying to Im- improve something, uh, <laughs> it's it's very important to know how to do that. Let me ask you, is there a board that gives us the stamp of Six Sigma approval? There is. Where is it? Germany? Uh, there's ones in the US. There's one in every country. And they have product testers. Well, it's not necessarily that, but like there's a certain amount of standards that you have to follow. Like, is this Six Sigma certified? Yeah. Um, does it necessarily go directly into products? No, but like there's a process. It's a lot of process analysis. Okay. Um, okay. So there's different variables you have to consider. I'll, I'll just get quickly into the example of the project I did at one of my companies that I used to work for in Wisconsin. No. Yeah. They had these... Uh, industrial commercial air filters that they were building or assembling. And I identify, or at first the operations manager was wanting me to identify, like, how do we make this run more efficiently on this assembly line? Mm. And I'm like, well, okay, that's a big project in itself. There's many different parts to this assembly process here, so let me just focus on one. And I started at the very beginning of where they have these paper pleater machines, which is the paper filtered paper that goes into these uh, air filters. Mm. And so they were calculating at the time, like, oh, there's maybe about a 5 to 6% uh, waste of every time they cut off the paper to exactly the size they need for that job. And uh, so I did a Six Sigma project on it where I actually had to first calculate, okay, what are the variables that I'm measuring? And then once I knew what those were, I had to like it. I figured out it was, okay, all the waste from each job that comes out, I have to have someone on the assembly line collect all the paper waste, throw it in a box, which I also have to measure the weight of the box and the weight of the paper, and then write that down. And I did that for 30 days straight for every job that came through the assembly line. And that was my data. I had to collect 30 days of data points. Six Sigma represent. And then after that, I had to do the analysis side of it of figuring out, okay, is this within the margin of error that we're looking for? Are there outliers where, hey, some of these jobs might produce more waste than others? Um, Does Six Sigma have a uh, a hand sign? You know, like a secret code? Not that I know. You know, like, not that I know. Six Sigma. 
you walk in the office and they go, it's nothing ninja like. Nothing like that. No, it really sounds like a secret organization, almost like the uh, the guys with the hats and the little triangles on them. What do you call that? <laughs> no, I'm talking about no. But uh, so I had to like do certain graphs. Like you've heard of Pareto charts, yeah, Pareto principle, yeah, Pareto chart. So that's something I had to measure too. Of like, okay, at what type of paper, where's eighty percent most of the waste coming from? Then there's the other twenty percent. But eventually then you have to come and figure out like, okay, what are some solutions that cut down on the waste? And I I don't want to get too in depth with it, but basically I had calculated that, oh, they thought they were wasting 6% of paper per job. It actually came out to 15%. Dude. And, and that's how you get that Six Sigma standard by really just fine tuning, refine, refine, mm-hmm. refine as much as you possibly can perfecting every microscopic piece and of the product yeah, or process and and process to create the product yeah mm-hmm. mm. so six sigma can apply to a process as well as the product mm-hmm. Ooh, that's freaking cool so like for example with you with real estate yeah you could look at like you know leads that you're getting and you know what's the success rate of them converting to an actual client or customer yeah and you can figure out through your different methods of reaching out, like which ones are actually worth your time, which ones are not. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's again, you could do a six sigma just on that, and then you can also break it down to just the conversion rates of okay, you got like out of you know 100 clients, you got six that actually want to buy a house, but then say, hey, a couple like last minute back out. You could even look into the data of that too if you have enough data points, right. And then figure out what's the reasoning behind that, too. Because it's not just like a quantitative analysis. It's very heavily qualitative. So you might think the reason is all like they're just not ready to buy a house. But it could be something else that you didn't even know about once you look at the data. That's freaking cool, man. So I can show you that offline. Yeah. Yeah, I've never heard of this in my life. And it's fascinating. I think what would help with all people, all people that have access to YouTube, is to search um, that Six Sigma, mm-hmm. look it up and see what it means. See it, look how they can understand the concept because it's 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 figuring out what the actual best of the best is for what we're given. And it really sets the gold standard for standards, period. Mm-hmm. Or just basic process, process improvement at any place you are, whether you're the owner of the company yep. or you're a worker. Mm. Like, so there's... I think it was like through Jack Welch that might have developed this. I, I could be mistaken. I don't want to be misquoted on that, but yeah, because if you do, yeah, if you mess up, it's on the body in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but there's uh, the yellow belt, green belt. Uh, actually, there's a white belt, yellow belt, green belt, black belt, master black belt, then champion black belt. And no, it has nothing related to do with karate. But <laughs> no. No. But that's just like the system they came up of like, what level are you at? Oh, freaking cool. So I'm a black belt. Okay. Nice job. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. You're one of the few guys I know that's a black belt. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you could use it at any part of like any job, whether you're in customer service, logistics, uh, engineering, sales, you can find any process and use Six Sigma on it to improve it. Now, Jake, what did it feel like, okay, you, you put in all this energy and effort, you got your first order, came to your house. How did it feel? Are you talking about the materials, or are you talking about, like, someone ordered theirs? The materials. Excitement. I mean, every time you get a box uh, coming to your house, just like Amazon, like, you get excited, and you're like, oh, what did I order? <laughs> yeah. What the, what could yeah. this be? Well, in this case, but, it's something that you, you created out of thin air. No, it... it it was definitely another motivator during that time of like, yes, one more piece of the puzzle is here. And there's times where things were delayed. Like I have a bunch of inventory at the house right now that took like 30 days to get here from China. Right. That was just one portion of the product. 30 days. But I was up like late at night because since they're over there on the other side of the world, having to like talk to them like at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, just to like coordinate of when that material is going to get here. Right. But it was definitely just kept building more excitement. And then once I had everything ready to go, like for the product launch, then there was nervousness uh, 
coming in anxiety because like, okay, like now I'm ready here. I'm ready to take this leap. But what if it doesn't go right? What if people don't like it? What if something goes wrong? Kind of these self-doubt thoughts. Right. And I forget, there was an article I read that, I forget the article, but basically on how the guy, someone just said, look, you're going to have mistakes. You're going to have messes that come up, roadblocks, but it's like, you just got to move forward. There's never a right time to do it. Like, cause I'm thinking like, okay, if I'm like maybe a little more settled in with a certain part of my life, then I'll do it. But it's like, no, like there's never a right time. I mean, you just got to do it and then just start learning as you go. Yeah, there's this principle that we bring up a lot on this podcast. It's making the decision and then making that the right decision. A lot of people wait to get ready, to get ready, to get ready, and it's procrastination. You know what that does? It kills you. It kills your momentum, kills your spirit, and gets you nowhere in life. Make the decision and then make it the right one. Part of success is being decisive. We have to be decisive because you know what decision actually means in the Latin term? It means to kill off. You're killing off a piece, but when you kill something off, it allows for new growth. Mm -hmm. Decide. Make the decision. Cut out. Get rid of the crap. Grow something new. Way to choose. Way to make a decision, Jake. You should be proud of yourself about that, man. Anybody that's decisive, be proud of yourself because you know, you're know you leaning into fear. You're saying, I'm going to do the thing anyways no matter what. Mm -hmm. Right? You're jumping in the pool. You don't know how cold it is. You're bold. Now... You got the product in the mail, and then let's let's move it up to the launch of the product. I was there at the launch party. That was freaking fun. Everybody came together from, from town. You had some bikini. More models were there. I don't know what's up with this guy. Surrounded by models everywhere he goes. And, uh, yeah, how was that experience for you to be able to see, like, your, your baby is alive and people are there to support you? Well, it was hectic. It was, it was, yeah, because well, again, a lot of logistics uh, on the back end of it just to get ready for that event. Yeah, that day I was running around with my head cut off. <laughs> Events, dude, it's like a full time job. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I I was up late the night before just trying to get things ready. There was like the the bamboo uh, wall divider there that I posted it on, and trying to get that. And then during that week leading up to it. There, I'm like, okay, this thing's not tall enough here. What if there's tall people at this event? I got to figure out what I'm going to put it on. So I'm like walking through Home Depot. I'm like looking at cinder blocks. I'm like, I, I just got to make this work. Yeah, it doesn't look the sexiest, but just got to make it work. I got to launch. Mm. And and then, oh, I forgot. I need ice. <laughs> How are we going to use this product if we don't have ice? So it's like just running to the nearest gas station, grabbing ice. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a lot. And then people message me like, oh, like, where do I park? Where do, what, where do I go here? Hey, I don't think I'm going to make it or whatever. And it's just like, I don't have time for this. But it's like, still had to answer them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just threw a 60, 70 person boat party a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago for a business conference. Dude, I feel the pressure, bro. Yeah. I feel your pain. Getting text messages, loading up the boat. And it's just like, why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At that point, oh, and like, then, like, what? And then coordinating food and then yeah. food and then. Yeah, like some the people, parking. Some yeah, people get there it. early, like, hey, where are you? Like, yeah, don't, don't worry where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, just go to the pool. Like, I'm busy. Like, I'll be there. Just stay there. <laughs> but, no, I remember, though, like, yeah, talking with everyone there uh, as we're kind of just, like, letting them settle in, get some food. And then, literally, big gust of wind comes and knocks over the entire display. Dude, I remember that. And cracks the unit. <laughs> yeah. Well, cr cr cracks the bowl, yeah. and also the adhesive straps all of a sudden don't work. And that's great feedback. Yeah. Feedback's fuel. Which, again, something I was not accounting for, because I'm like, I've been at that pool dozens of times. I'm like, it's never that windy. Here's a good one for you. I just thought of this now. Let's let's add this to the bucket, shall we? One negative in business should produce two positives. Mm. So you got one, you know, it was a negative. Mm -hmm. Your stuff broke. And it could produce two positives. So what did you do to turn that around, Jake? Well, luckily a positive was having Richard there because I was having him do all the video content shooting at that point. Mm -hmm. And I had told him beforehand, I'm like, look, no matter what, you keep me on track here of what needs to happen when, like a production schedule basically. Um, you know, tell me where to go, when to start things. Like, yeah, I'm I'm the CEO, but yet I'm like, hey, I need someone else to kind of dictate this part of it because that's not my forte. Mm. 
Um, but then also just kind of re- looking at it, re- resetting it up, and still the energy and support was there. So um, still made it work with what we had. Yeah. And, hey, I still had to hold it manually <laughs> as we're loading the ice in because, like, the adhesive straps weren't working at that point. So still made it work. Um, and, yes, the product does work. It does hold up uh, in the shower. Yep. But yes, it does. I mean, that was kind of an embarrassing moment in in my opinion. Even though like everyone else was like totally fine with it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. no one noticed. I mean, so yeah, that's but it's fun. It's that, and that's just something as an entrepreneur too. Like a lot of your own negative thoughts. Like don't let that, you know, make your decisions for you, and don't let it like cause you to like pause or panic. If somebody else isn't trying to tear you down. Your own mind might try to do it over here, which still happens a lot. So, all right, this is really good. We're painting a great picture for these folks because this is an incredible journey, Jake. It really is. Which then there's more to it. Then yep. so okay, got some sales the day of, yep. or the night of the party, yep. and a few more sales trickled in a couple of days after that. I'd say at least on the social media side of it, blew up like. I don't know how many shares I had. Uh, like there was over ten thousand views on the initial video of the launch party. Whoa! I think it's maybe thirteen, fourteen now. Yeah. But it, like, I've had so many people on social media share, like, the pictures and the videos and like all the congrats. Is like my flo- my phone like was blown up for three days straight, saying congrats or like, oh, I'm super excited for you, which is awesome, dude. Yeah, it's good energy. Good energy, but yeah. then it's like. Okay, where are all the sales then? There was no sales coming in, or at least there was minimal sales. Okay. And so kind of you're thinking in your head, like, okay, what the heck did I do wrong here? Like, I... And you know that ain't good to think that way. No. No. But it's still just starting to like, okay, I still got to keep moving forward. This is one of my mentors from the 3D Printing Accelerator told me, he's like, hey, even if it's bad stuff happening, like, just keep moving forward. Like, things will slowly progress and work in your favor. Yeah. Never stop moving forward. But yep. I also did like on 4th of July, I had like a special sale going on. No sales. Like, what the heck? Scratch my head. What's going on here? And it's just trying to troubleshoot in your mind, at least, or on paper. Like, okay, what is it that I'm missing here? And it's, well, I figured out it was brand awareness. Also product awareness. Going to a few events, showcasing and demoing the product. But people walking by and they're like, what is that thing? And especially when it's in right next to an actual cold plunge, you're, they're like, well, I'm here to cold plunge. I'm like, well, this is another innovative product here where you can do it right in your own apartment. How cold, how cold can a standard shower get just by turning the water on? As I said, at least here in mine, again, speaking for myself, 70 degrees. Seven zero. Mm-hmm. And you drop it down to 42. 42. Mm-hmm. It's huge. That's ice cold. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and a yeah. regular cold plunge bath can get down i mean 30 some degrees yeah i think 37.5 is kind of standard for a lot of them that i've been in yeah that's freaking close Mm -hmm. yep um what's the overall goal for cold plunge caddy where do you see it going long term i mean this is just version one that we're seeing right now i have about three other versions one maybe a more permanent fixture one that's going to potentially look at on the science side of it using some sort of thermal like substance like in an ice pack to hey all you have to do is throw the bowl in there in your freezer and hopefully it maintains like the actual effect of the ice that you just don't even have to put ice in it cool but again yeah, yeah. got to look into the science of that right yeah, now on version one the water run through it and make the ice and i get that yeah like i'm gonna also maybe like right now it's just a bunch of little holes i might increase the hole size or do slits uh, just to like get a better water flow, so you feel more submerged, like if you're in a cold plunge. What about a cold, an ice pack? Looking at that too. Yep. Um, another accessory that I'm working on right now is uh, ice holder for in your showers for the hardcore people out there that want to go long because right now you get down to 42 degrees for about two to three minutes. Yeah. Which is pretty much good for most people. But for the guys that and gals that are super hardcore about like, I want to go 10 minutes. Well, it's not going to last that long with just the four pounds of ice. So 
if I can have an actual ice holder in your shower, that you just scoop more as you go. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm picturing all this right now, and this is just firing my brain up in all kinds of ways. This is super cool. Uh, and then there's all the ideas, too, of how to market this thing, too, that we could get into. But, I mean... Oh, yeah, this is what I was going to ask you. What about culture? Culture. How do you create a movement behind Cold Plush Caddy, Jake? Well, I mean, now already being called the Cold Plunge Daddy. Yeah. I, mean, I know a lot of dads that actually like to do that kind of stuff. When are you going on Shark Tank? <laughs> You're like number 100 something that have told me that, but they want sales first. So right now I have a few dozen sales, but working towards more. Yeah. What do you think the next move is to get more sales? Well, spoke to on a gym. We'll see what they think. Yeah. Uh, going to different gyms and pitching it to them. Has anybody, have you ever done a, um, not, not necessarily like a honey roast, but like a feedback roast where you just get people to kind of pick it apart, right? And oh, I get you, that constantly. Oh, uh, you just get it in general? Uh, I get it from people that maybe, hey, they, they don't even buy one, but still it's like, I'll take the feedback. Okay. But I also like for the ones that do try it, I'm like, yeah, tell me what's wrong with it. Well, how can I improve it? Yeah, yeah. I always want to make it better. It takes a lot of humility to be an inventor, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because especially when, okay, you're number 100 something that says like, oh, put out, he's, this is a good shark tank idea. It's like. Well, just for speed. Oh. And talk about feedback. Oh, yeah. Those five people on the shark tank, they'll give you some feedback. Oh, yeah. Because they know stuff like this. Yeah. Like QVC lady. Mm-hmm. Dude. Uh, Lori or whatever her name is. I just had an idea. Who can we email to get you on QVC? I don't know. Skip Shark Tank. Don't give up 50% of your company. Just no, that's, get on that's QVC. the other thing. Just, just get on QVC. We'll talk offline about that. We should figure out how to get that done. Yeah. Um. So you got a, a bunch of different versions coming out. Well, in theory, they, there's a possibility for that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, what about the mission behind Cold Punch? Caddy as a business, as an organization. What's the mission behind it? Mission was, again, out of my own inconvenience, wanted to receive the cold plunging benefits, but at a more affordable cost. Mm. And so this is where I wanted to make it more accessible to people that they're interested in doing it, but hey, they can't afford one. They don't have the space for one, especially if they're in an apartment. So I just want to make those benefits more accessible to people overall mm. to continue a healthy lifestyle and, or build that healthy lifestyle for themselves. Man, that's good. That's good. Because, I mean, me, I mean, we've worked out together yep. plenty of times at gyms, and, like, we want to maintain that lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Which it also feeds into all the other aspects of your life, too. So, like, hey, if you're crushing it at the gym and you have a, your cold plunge caddy for the good recovery aspect of it, you know, how much that can compound on to other th parts of your life. Yeah, and there's so much science behind the cold plunge, so much data. Mm-hmm. Endless amounts of material and content all over the internet. It really doesn't make sense not to have a cold plunge caddy in your your shower stall mm -hmm. this day and age. It should be like brushing your teeth, mm -hmm. right? And you can travel with it too anywhere. Put it in your suitcase, mm -hmm. right? It's foldable. Dang on right. So, Jake, what's one message you want to send out to the, the future um, future inventors of the world? What would you want to say to them? Just take the plunge. Go. What's the first step? <laughs> Come up with a idea that solves a problem. Yeah. Like an actual problem. Not like one of those widget or things that you spin on your finger there like you see in the gas stations. Yeah. Like I actually like came up with this idea to like solve a problem. Right. And that's all the future products that I want to develop. Like I have like another one for a ring protector for women that protect their wedding ring. Mm-hmm. And that I, it's like, again, solving a problem for them. Like, hey, I don't want to scratch my, my ring on, uh, while I'm lifting weights or lose it while I'm out hiking or swimming or something. So it's like always solving a problem for people. Yeah. Always and, so figure out how to solve a problem. And don't think about the money aspect of it. If money's your driver here, you're not going to be successful. It's not going to motivate you. And that is, is true in nearly every single endeavor. If it's about the money, it's not going to work. Because, I mean, the Wright brothers, Tesla, um, I mean, Albert Einstein, I mean, they were like the pure inventors there, but they never saw the business side of it, which, hey, usually other people came along and partnered up with them, but they were never about the, the money. No, they're about changing the world. Yeah, the ideas of, so like coming up with your ideas that actually solve problems for people. 
that w- that's what drives me. I just don't want another pointless product out there. Like I want to actually like, hey, this will improve someone's life. Yeah, in some way. The ring protector. You know, if you could get on that sooner rather than later, because I got this <laughs> this aura ring here. And I wore it for my first workout. You're supposed to wear it when you work out. All right. Oh, they do have those on there, on Amazon. What? Or uh, ring protectors. Yeah. That's how I started with that idea, too. First workout, dude. I got scratches. Well. I'm like, dude, tungsten, that doesn't scratch. This looks like tungsten, but it's not. What's up with that? I need Jake's products. Save us, Jake. I mean, I can 3D print that for you right now. You can? Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Jake, remind the audience one more time how they get a hold of you. Uh, Machine Margus on Instagram. Machine Margus. Machine Margus. M-A-R-G-I-S is the last name. Don't forget it. Awesome. Awesome. You heard it here first, folks. Jake Margus. Also check out Jake's Cakes on Instagram for your next party event because this guy has been slinging some amazing cookie cakes. Literally, they're they're all over the place. Every time I open my Instagram feed, there's somebody that has a Jake's Cakes to their party. So hit that all up also on Insta. And uh, as far as this podcast goes, please hit that s- subscribe button, smash that like, that thumbs up, whatever they've got now nowadays would be great. My name is Greg Carlson, your host, and again, Jake Marcus, thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you. Stay fired up.